Well, this doesn't look good. As you can see, we've taken some stuff apart. We've got a little bit of stuff off the motor and we're gonna be taking some more stuff off because we've gotta get the camshaft out. We're replacing the camshaft. If you saw my last video, I told you that we might end up doing this because when we took the car to Pigeon Forge and we actually got it on the street, we realized that it was very difficult to drive with the way that this camshaft runs everything. And we figure even if we adjust the distributor to advance the timing and try a couple other things in the motor, it's probably just not gonna get where we want it. And we've talked to some people that we know that actually build motors pretty much for a living. And they've told us the same thing. This particular comp cam just is not a street cam, even though they advertise it as one. So we're actually gonna be putting in a new one. We've got it over here in the box. It's got some smaller lobes, so it's supposed to run more from 2000 RPM to 6200 RPM instead of 2500 RPM to 6500 RPM. So that should allow us to have an easier driving street car. That's kind of what we're looking forward to. So for this video, we're gonna be taking apart the motor so we can get the cam out that's in it right now and then putting in that new one that's over there in that box. This might be a lot of work. You have more of the engine taken apart. Intake's off, carburetor's obviously off because the intake's off, valve covers are off, distributor's taken out, and it's a good thing we ended up deciding to change out the camshaft because when taking this apart, taking the intake off, we discovered a pretty major issue. You'll notice right here, one, the rocker arm is not on and we're missing a push rod. And that's because we discovered when we took this off that something happened with cylinder one while the engine was running. Either we didn't have a rocker arm set right or something. We're not really sure exactly what caused it. We think maybe the exhaust, yeah, that's the exhaust side. We think maybe the exhaust side, the rocker arm wasn't set right and it caused some things to get loose. And because these lifters work in tandem with each other for this shaft, we think it caused something to happen here and then it got stuck. Push rods ended up getting stuck and this push rod had completely come off the lifter and it was just kind of hanging out. These two lifters had been completely pushed out of the shafts in the engine block. And that second push rod was snapped in half and just laying inside the engine block. I think in one of my recent videos from Pigeon Forge, it might have been the last one I actually updated that I mentioned the engine wasn't running quite right while we were up there. We thought maybe it was just the camshaft not being the right one and just having issues with it, but it turns out it probably wasn't running right because that push rod was broken. And with that cylinder being off, that would cause the cylinder to misfire because it's not getting what it needs to to combust or exhaust properly. And that's just gonna cause issues with the engine running. If we hadn't have found that, we could have probably just ended up running this engine until something major happened and cost a lot more money to get it fixed and repaired. So we're glad we actually ended up doing this because taking that apart was how we ended up finding out that that was an issue. So now we've got the new camshaft we gotta put in. After we finish taking everything else off, we gotta take timing cover off so that we can pull the camshaft out. And of course, we gotta take all the push rods and everything out before we do that. And so we're gonna be ordering a new push rod for that slot there. Everything else looks good. The other push rods are not bent, they're still straight. And the rockers are solid. So we think it was just that one broken push rod that we need to replace. And then we just need to make sure that when we go back that we don't miss anything with getting everything set properly. We think it was just this one nut wasn't set properly. So we're gonna have to recheck all that obviously when we put everything back together. So we're gonna be getting to work on taking out the push rods and the camshaft. 
I would like to set the camera up and do kind of like a time lapse of us taking this stuff apart and putting it back together, but my dad really does not like being on camera and he's helping with this project, obviously. So I'd respect that, which is why I do these interval updates and show you kind of what we've done. But it's time for me to get back to work and get some more of this engine taken apart. Skipping ahead a little bit here. With the engine, we have the new camshaft in. The gear is back on the outside. We have this little cardboard here to help protect keeping stuff out of the engine. We have all of the push rods back in and replace the ones that needed to be replaced with new ones. We got some other parts ordered that we're waiting on to get here. We're gonna do some kind of cleaning in the engine bay and just making everything look better again before we start putting everything back together while we're waiting on the stuff to get delivered. So we'll finish off this video once we've got pretty much everything put back together and we'll check the engine to see if it cranks, fingers crossed, and hopefully it'll be running a lot better this time around. The engine is back together for the most part. <laughs> Battery's not hooked up and we have some finishing touches to do, but we did do a test fire. It does crank and run. It's just not really in time. So we've got to go through the timing process, get everything timed properly. But it looks like this camshaft is going to run really well. It sounds really good with this setup that we've got. It actually may sound better than the camshaft we had in it. Not gonna lie. When we did the test fire, we did run into a blown fuse and we actually ended up having an issue with the neutral safety switch uh, in the car. We got the test fire done and we shut it off after a couple seconds. And then we went to test fire again and it just wouldn't crank. Tried it a few times, wouldn't crank, wouldn't crank, and we ended up flooding the engine out. Got under the dash and realized that the wires for the neutral safety switch to let the engine know that the clutch is pushed in so it will crank came unhooked. So we're, we actually had to go in and fix that wiring, get that set up so it will stay in and not be pulling out. And we think the wiring was a little short and the way it was ran, it was just tugging on the connection and just pulled the wires out. So we lengthened it up so it would be uh, more slack in the wires and not pulling on it. We then got it fixed. We just haven't test fired because we actually ended up working on some other stuff on the interior with wiring. We figure since that was messed up, might as well double check everything. But you'll hear more about that in the next Nova video, which I'm actually already in the process of working on. So we should have another one coming up pretty shortly. We are very excited to have the engine back together. But like I said, it's mostly back together. Still have some finishing touches to do. And we're also going to be dropping the oil pan and installing a new one. We have a factory style GM oil pan and it's one of those from the year models where they're known for leaking around the front and rear of the oil pans. So we've actually ordered a replacement oil pan from Champ Pans. We'll probably be working on that over the Christmas holiday when my dad and I are both off work, but that's not really gonna change much for the engine itself. It's they're just gonna unmount the engine in the front, drop the pan, slide it back, get it out, and then take the gasket out that's in there, put in the new gasket, the new pan, make sure everything's sealed, refill it with oil. So I'm not gonna hold up this video waiting on that to get done. Might do a little short or something about uh, the oil pan replacement. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek inside the car at what we've been working on. Center console is no longer installed properly. It's kind of apart and we've got wires running over here. So look out to see what's coming up in that next video. But for now, thanks for watching. This is Southpaw Garage, signing out.